Hey guys, my name is Dan, I'm a veterinarian, and today I'm covering the two most common surgical procedures that I talk about and recommend for an ACL tear or an anterior cruciate ligament or a cranial cruciate ligament tear in a doggy. The two procedures are the extracapsular and the TPLO, which is the tibial plateau leveling osteotomy. We have the tibia and we have the femur here, and this ligament slides from the tibia onto the femur and it prevents the tibia from sliding forward. This is so important because when a doggy steps down, if that ligament is torn and the tibia slides forward, it's uncomfortable, it causes fluid collection, inflammation, and instability bruise arthritis in that knee. Number one, the extracapsular procedure. This procedure allows the veterinarian to stabilize the knee. The first thing the veterinarian is going to do is go in there and clean out the stifle or the knee joint with the extra capsular procedure. They open the joint up, if the meniscus is torn, they release it. If the ACL is just flapping in the wind, they cut that out. We're removing anything that caused chronic inflammation, fluid collection, or pain in the knee. After doing that, the veterinarian closes the capsule and they do their extra capsular procedure now. What they do is they drill a hole, a small hole in the tibia, and they take an implant which is really thick suture, go through the hole in the tibia, and then they come all the way back and go around a bone called a sesamoid bone that sits behind the femur. They either use a tie or a clamp and they really cinch that down. Before you had a beautiful ACL that was stabilizing that stifler knee joint. Now the extra capsular procedure stabilizes it so as time passes, it can scar down and it can stabilize itself over six to eight weeks of exercise restriction. The big problem with this procedure is it's not great for big dogs. As you can see, there is that suture there, that big thick suture that holds the knee in place. If you have a big doggy, guys, and we're running around or all that weight and power, if we tear that suture that's looped through the tibia or through those bones and it falls apart, the knee is loose again and to redo it. For this reason, most veterinarians will not do this procedure on dogs that are bigger. It is casually subjective depending on what your weight cutoff is, but most dogs that are bigger, it is not a good option for. And that is why the TPLO is probably the most common ACL surgery done in the veterinary community. TPLO surgeries are routinely done by orthopedic veterinary surgeons. They are done in general practice, but not near as commonly as the extracapsular procedure. What happens with the TPLO procedure is a veterinarian will literally make a cut with a special tool into the tibia, and then they will, using physics and geometry, will rotate that bone so the tibia is no longer positioned to slide forward. Once the tibia has been cut and plated and repositioned so it no longer slides forward, of course, the joint is cleaned out, just like the other procedure, but that is all we have to do. Once stabilized, the TPLO procedure, physics and geometry-wise, corrects the sliding knee joint so it's stabilized. With both these procedures, rest is needed. Six to eight weeks of doing nothing, controlled potty breaks on a leash, and NSAIDs for inflammation and pain, pain meds as needed, God, that's a lot of work. You're going to have to baby this kid and get recovered. Once recovered, though, the good news is most of them do quite well. The bad news is if a dog tears an ACL, there's a good chance they're going to tear the next one within a year or so. It's rough. So with that, guys, I hope this was really helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I hope your dogs have very healthy knees that have been fixed or if they don't need it are just healthy in general. Please like, subscribe. Please comment, share your opinions and experiences with me. I'd greatly appreciate it.